Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are going to continue today with the core concept series for med surge nursing. Now this is, I think the 16th video in the core concept series. So if you've missed any of the others and you want to go back and refresh, they are all linked in the description box below. Now this is an excellent series if you're a fundamental student and just learning the basics. This is also a really nice series if you're a med surge student and you need to refresh on some of the basics as you move into more complicated concepts. So again, this is a back to the basic series. We really are just trying to understand what is happening inside of the body so that we can better assess and care for clients with acute and chronic conditions. Today's topic is going to be immunity. Immunity is defined as the protection from illness or disease that is maintained by the body's physiologic defense mechanisms. So there are really four types of immunity that we need to talk about. The first one is natural active immunity. So this is when we actually acquire a disease, right? So like the flu. So the antigen enters our body and our body creates antibodies that fight off that antigen. Artificial active immunity is when we get a flu immunization. Natural passive immunity occurs when antibodies are passed from mother to fetus. So this is when mom gets a flu shot and baby gets the immunity passed on through either the placenta or colostrum or breast milk. And then artificial passive immunity occurs by a specific transfusion, such as like immunoglobulins. So you've probably heard of certain autoimmune disorders in which the treatment does involve IV administration of immunoglobulins. That's artificial passive immunity. So immunity has the potential to be decreased and, or suppressed or weakened. You'll hear all three words or exaggerated or heightened. And we're gonna talk about both ends of the spectrum. Okay, so when antibodies and antigens interact in an attempt to slow down or destroy a foreign body, that's called the antibody mediated immunity. And so in our bodies, this involves our B cells, our macrophages, our T cells, which are T lymphocytes, and the spleen is also involved in this process. Now there's another type of immunity. It's called cell mediated immunity. This is when numerous cells work together to fight off an antigen. And this is going to be our white blood cells. Again, our T cells, our NK cells, which are natural killer cells, cytokines, the thymus, and the lymph nodes all working together to fight off this antigen. Now, when we think about interrelated concepts to immunity, we have cellular regulation, of course, inflammation, and then we can't not talk about infection. So all three of those concepts we have previously discussed in this series. So after reviewing this one, if you feel like you need to go back and review or refresh on those three related concepts, they are available and linked in the description box below. So let's talk about risk factors. Aging. I feel like aging is almost a risk factor for everything we've talked about in this series, but definitely our immunity um, response declines as we age. Lower socioeconomic status can also contribute to decreased immunity. Of course, anyone who is not immunized, chronic illness weakens the immune system. And then there are certain drug therapies that weaken our immune system. Corticosteroids is one. Always keep that in the back of your mind. Clients who are on long-term corticosteroids do have a weakened or suppressed immune system. And then, of course, chemotherapy. Substance abuse disorders also weaken our immune system. Then just not living a healthy lifestyle, not exercising, not eating right, um, you know, not following those healthy lifestyle guidelines and behaviors. And then there is a genetic risk for decreased or excessive immunity. Physiologic consequences. So for decreased immunity, of course, infection. So anytime that your immune system is suppressed, weakened, decreased, you are at high, high risk for infection. So you're unable to fight off particular antigens. Now, excessive immunity is what we see in people that have heightened allergic responses. So you would get exposed to some type of allergen and we have that really severe allergic reaction, even possibly it's anaphylactic shock. We can also have autoimmune reactions or develop autoimmune diseases when our immunity is heightened or in excess. So assessment, uh, health history, we always start with health history. So client and family, and then we want to assess allergies. Is the client allergic to anything? And then what are the medications that they're taking currently? And this is going to give us a good idea based on the risk factors that we've already discussed what may or may not be causing these problems. We also wanna look at a history of any environmental exposures, 
and of course, an immunization history. We could also assess for adequate wound healing. So when our immune system is uh, suppressed or weakened, we don't heal properly. So does the client have a history of poor wound healing? Do they have a history of allergic response, severe allergic response, red, watery eyes, nasal congestion, swelling, rashes, wheezing, coughing, um, all of those things that indicate an allergic response. And then we could actually have potential or actual organ dysfunction as, as a uh, relationship to immunity. So think about autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. When we think about laboratory testing, of course, a, C, a CBC with differential, the differential is going to allow us to look at all of those immune properties. So all of those different white blood cell functions, C-reactive protein and erythrocyte sedimentation rate. These are always going to be elevated when your immune system is activated. So we see this with infection or even just inflammation or a combination of the two inside the body. The CRP and the ESR are an indication of inflammation. Of course, we could do allergy testing. We can look at an ELISA or a Western blot test. Those are specific tests for HIV. And then our anti-nuclear antibody test, so the ANA test, you may have heard of that one before, that test for autoimmune diseases. So when your ANA is positive, often you have an autoimmune disorder. And then rheumatoid factor, again, also when that's present in the body, that is an indication of an autoimmune disorder. For health promotion, we want to avoid infections. And of course, that involves frequent hand washing, avoiding large crowds, possibly wearing a mask. Um, if you have a client that has a suppressed immune system, they need to be really have a heightened awareness of infection control. Of course, immunizations, that's primary prevention for um, keeping our immune system healthy. And then we talked about healthy lifestyle already. So a good diet, adequate sleep, regular exercise. And then really important that we get preventative health exams. So um, we see our doctor on a regular basis for that physical exam and any preventative screening. So let's talk about interventions. For decreased immunity, again, this is really good infection control. Hand washing, avoiding large crowds, wearing a mask, avoiding people who are sick, um, avoiding anyone with a communicable disease. So that's for our decreased immunity patients. Now, excessive immunity, this is really going to require interprofessional collaboration, um, and that's going to depend on the type and severity of the reaction. So think about people who have lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder. It does affect a lot of body systems, um, and it does require this collaborative um, interprofessional approach to management. So our goal with excessive immunity is going to be to decrease symptoms and then to promote quality of life. Okay, guys, so that's all I have for you today on immunity. Hopefully that was helpful um, as a basic discussion about immunity. If you have any questions, certainly leave them below. If you want to catch up on any videos that you may have missed in the series, they are linked in the description box below. Also, I have many, many products that are related to this core concept series in my Etsy shop. So if you want to check those out, there is a link in the description box below. And please check me out on Twitter and Instagram. I am posting daily over there. I post practice NCLEX questions as well as answers and rationales. I post inspirational stuff for nursing students as well as I share resources. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please check any of those sites out. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next Core Concepts series video, which will actually be the last in this series. And then we will move on to a new series, which I will be talking about in our next Core Concepts video. Have a wonderful day.